Hello everybody and welcome back to my video log, uh, my channel and I'd just like to give you a bit of an update on what's been going on with this. So here we can see one of these uh, ESP 60 watt um, audio amplifier boards, power output and uh, they're great, don't get me wrong, they're great, they're something you can build at home with you know sort of uh, very common parts, dead easy. Uh, this one's got a whole bunch of transistors missing, and I'll tell you why, and I'll show you the bottom of that. If I pull this out a bit, you can actually see. <laughs> we had a little bit of an issue. Now, this is not the board. This is not, you know, that, that, that you can leave these boards on and just leave them on. They're fine, I honestly are. The amount of times um, I've gotten up in the morning to see the little green lights on they're fine the problem and I've done this twice now this time I've blown a whole bunch of transistors and I'm down to this one here on the um, on the uh, on the input on the uh, this is a um, long tail pair and I'm down to this one if this one hasn't gone then I'm pretty sure these two will be okay but if this one's gone I may even be down here but I don't think this one would have gone but the main transistors went the driving transistors went and the bias bias transistor went and um, I can't remember what the little transistor is that sits in front of here but that went as well uh, everything else seems to be okay apart from this resistor and now instead of it being 0.27 um, ohms it's 70 ohms so that's no good whatsoever. Um, and you can see that the board's taking a bit of a, a rough and tumble. The These are all like dead so far. So I'm hoping, but they're cheap. They're cheap. These are the things I was getting off the internet. Um, they're not expensive. They are the ones that you can get, I think there's five for two or three pounds. There are five pairs, I should say. So you get the left and right channel, uh, PMP and NPM. Uh, cheapest chips. And these are um, little 140s and 139s. These are the cheapest chips as well. Uh, these BC546s, uh, they're, you know, they're reasonably cheap. Um, I didn't buy the cheapest I could find. I bought these Philips ones. I think they're Philips. Well, I said they were Philips. But again, it was all uh, off the eBay and place like that. But it doesn't matter. And I tell you what, you know, I've come to this conclusion of it as well. I've been reading some books on amplifiers and bits and pieces, especially the older stuff, uh, tubes and that. And what it was put to me in a book is this: is back in the day when they were doing high fidelity, you know, um, reproduce it as it was produced type stuff, high fidelity. Uh, they're using parts and stuff that you throw out today. You throw them out so they know they're no good, and you replace them with something a bit better. And they don't have to be the best parts to get a good sound. And this is not using the best parts, and the, the sound on these is great, and they're so easy to build as well. Okay, they're a bit time consuming, but hey, um, you know, that's part of the fun of this, though, isn't it? And getting it right and having a nice little amplifier speaks. Now, why did it blow? Well, I'll tell you why it blew because it's me. It's me a little bit, and it's this a little bit. When I say it's me and it's this, I mean, this is like class A. So if you imagine this is your yeah, water pipes, it means that the taps are open fully all the time. All right, so if I make a <laughs> noise here with a loose cable, uh, it amplifies that somewhat chronic and then it outputs that and it puts it into here and, you know, it just does, just can't handle it. And that's what happened. And... There's another thing I found about this as well, but I'll go, I'll go over that in a second. And I did that the first time around. You'd think I'd learn. You'd think I'd learn. This thing's running at, uh, I think it's uh, 353, no? Yeah, 3535. So 353.5, because it's 250 volts coming in times 1.414. And that's what you get. So that's what this is running at on these, uh, on these plates, on these... So, um, yeah, it's all systems go, and when, oh God, I should have this over here, shouldn't I? And when, uh, when it makes that noise coming through here, 
it amplifies it up, kicks it out, puts it into this amplifier, and this amplifier can't take it like that. And it pops it out. But the worst part of this isn't this. The worst part of this is something that I'm glad that I took the precaution of. And the precaution was to get these speaker protectors. Because the first time I did this, it actually killed one of the cones to my speakers. And I was gutted because the speakers are like nearly 300 pounds. And it's when you kill a cone, you've got to try and find one, you've got to try and split the speaker up. Oh, it's a whole bunch of hassle you don't want. Um, so I invested in some of these. Um, I'll show you the circuit for it. I invested in this on the board, and I'll put the board up now. Quickly, this is a variation of the board, and the only difference here is where it says Powell, you'll see a black cylinder type thing. That's a um, that's a resettable fuse. I don't have that on mine. I have little uh, little five amp fuses on mine, and my five amp fuse blue, which is brilliant because it didn't blow my speaker. But that is the um, this is pretty much exactly the same as what that uh, circuit is and there's the fuse there mine's a glass 5 amp on mine and uh, on that particular board I've just shown you he doesn't have any of the other ones that's uh, Brian Powell Audio that's the chap who I bought mine off a couple of them one for each speaker obviously and I just had to change the fuse I was so happy when I realised it had blown the fuse because that meant that that could have killed my speaker cone and it didn't very very happy uh, something else I'll tell you you know because I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna see about if that isn't burnt out there I'm um, good for replacing the rest of it I'll replace this the caps are good I've already tested them I got one of these uh, in circuit testers and it works out okay everything else seems to be normal these uh, 10 ohm here is normal I don't see why anything else should be affected. I think even the LED might still be good, but I'll find that out as well. Um, another thing about this um, Matsui type thing is, this is something I didn't realise, and it's happened to me a couple of times. One, where you'd be listening the way to it, and if you switch it off, and then try switching it back on again, it won't work. It doesn't come on you got to leave it for an hour for everything to cool down. And then you switch it back on again, and you'll hear the relay click over. Now, but I've had this happen. I was doing washing up the other day, and I was just listening to Squeeze, Call for Cats, and partway through it, it just stopped. I could very faintly hear out of my speakers the music, but it stopped. Uh, it stopped, um, you know, amplifying. And for some reason, it just like switched itself on and I couldn't get it to come back on again. This is why it's on the bench. This is why I've had it. I've just been running signals through its sweeps and all sorts up and down the uh, audio range just to try and get it to do it again. And I haven't managed to actually get it to switch off while I've been running those sweeps. But I have noticed that if I do have it going, I do leave it for 20 minutes or something. And then I switch off the circuit and switch it back on again. That relay doesn't go, doesn't work. So anybody that's thinking about me getting that, just uh, you know, bear that in mind. And I'll stick that in the description as well, because somebody might just be interested in that. They might have had the same sort of issue, thought it was an issue, and you know, got irritated with that. But uh, so I'm not quite sure what this video is about. This video is about um, just destroying this, but not in such a way that it can't be fixed again. It will be fixed. I'll fix it up, and that's the great thing about you know building one of these is that. You get the spare ones, and it's so easy just to rebuild it again. You've got a working speaker channel, uh, amplifier channel again, and of course the speaker protection board. Um, that was a very worthwhile investment. I might actually try building one of these because I got some triax. Because I remember when my um, my eight nine eight D, the SMD rework station, popped its triac and i had to buy a bunch instead of just buying one i think i bought 10 in a strip it's like a couple of quid from china 10 and that one that i put in there has been in there since now i don't use the solder part of it because i didn't find it kept its temperature as well but i do use the hot air gun 
and uh, so it's still up there but yeah so I've got one of these and I know I've got some of these and I've got some VC549 so I might end up just building one of these myself and um, do some tests on it you know get it to chuck some voltages through that shouldn't be going through it some current through and see if I can pop some of these uh, fuses out okay that's it for this guys um, thanks for watching if you got this far I hope some of this may have been helpful to you or not um, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Bye for now.